item is in regards to banners and I appreciate your help on getting some background information in regards to that item. Uh, in our records really we don't have anything except uh, that it was done it was done one time in the past but we don't have a policy right now that really covers banner banners on our properties for non-profit organizations. So again we have we have the option if we do offer the parks with some events and we want to go a step further by allowing the banners to be posted on our properties we have the option or we will say no we're not going to allow that on any of our properties for all non-profit organizations so we're bringing this before you to kind of make a decision whether we need to allow the banners or not to allow the banners And, and how long do the banner, is this just for the function that the nonprofit's doing, or is this, how long is the banner going to stay up there? That, that is correct. It's for the nonprofit organization that during the event. During the event. Yes, sir. And that's, uh, that's so many days we have to decide on before the event and be consistent with all of them. Well, that makes sense. I would, um, 
I would prefer and would like to hear uh, either Jason or Adam's thoughts on on that. Uh, the, the negatives to it and the positives to it, because you know there might be something we're missing. That, that or is there is there is there a negative or positive? How do you look at that? I, I think it ultimately can go back to the, the town ordinance and requirements of the town's ordinance. That would go back to plan. That would be one place that would go. Uh, Jason did reach out to a lot of other municipalities around us through his connections with, with parks and recs and what they allow. And anybody else that we reached out to does not allow for them for any nonprofit or anybody other than the town to advertise for events in the park or on town property other than the day of an event. Like if you have a picnic going on, yeah, you can have a banner or a free or company or whatever that day, but not before the event or after the event. It's just if I may add uh, Adam, Mr. Cohen, I think that the downside of it would be if someone riding can see a banner. You might not know the background behind the policy in regards to nonprofit, so that's going to be a bit confusing. We're going to have to provide explanation to whoever raised the question why it was allowed only for nonprofit, not for us, etc. Based on your recommendation, yes, similar to what I said, with speaking with other municipalities, they do not allow it, and I, I think to kind of piggyback off what Patrick said, it can be a challenging aspect if other groups or organizations drive by and see a banner, they're going to want to either put a banner up in their location, which would then go against some of the, the planning zones that are currently allowed. So you're saying, what about the day of? Day of, I, I find no problem. I think it's a good thing to promote it the day of, and that way it gives more recognition for whatever the activity of your event is. All right, so you have a photo list of also? No. no, I was going to say, well, I was going to ask council, would there be a discrimination problem between a, a nonprofit and any other business to say, well, why them and not us? But, but that was already answered. So. Um, and also, just, I mean, the other, the other problem is um, the concern that people might believe in a, a town event and a town supported activity, even with corporations, um, nonprofit or profit. And of course, we, the town of Long Beach, sure that um, it separates itself from the activity. No preferential treatment given to anyone. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I make a motion that we, we go back to 2012, Mr. Cohn. Um, if you remember, ITAA, a nonprofit, had requested to put their registration on for two weeks on there. And you also brought it to the conversation on the other side of 74, we had banner locations um, to allow Porter Ridge the same opportunity and that was approved and it was approved for that moving forward. Can, can I comment? Yeah. That's a that's a what my dad would say a portion of a different garage. Oh, because <coughs> there's this policy that has <coughs> uh, their ability to do so. Uh, that we're talking about nonprofit baseball football organizations to put their signs out not not in front of parks, but everywhere. You know, they, they put it on the edge of corners and every so children will know where to go sign up for baseball. There's a lot of people or, or football or whatever, there's a lot of people in town that, that don't know, you know, and they look and they go, Oh, there's a sign that says go sign up for football. I, I think what we're doing now no, is, stre is stretching this out. Thank you, Mr. Understand last night, because we allow them to use these spots that they're asking for for the two weeks. And they've used it consistently. Actually, they use it for more than two weeks. Well, but they took while the town wasn't using it. They've been using them consistently since. <clears throat> At least ITA has had been over to the other side. If we put this policy in place, does this jeopardize and ruin their ability because of the policy to continue to do so? I, I, I'd say, I just say no, because what the sign says, the sign says the sign-ups are from, uh, and I'm making up dates, April 1st to, to May the 3rd. So you have multiple times you can sign up. It has multiple locations that you can sign up. It's more of an information sign than it is advertising sign. It's just get letting the people. I don't know. You guys got anything? I'm just asking if the policy, if the new policy would remove their ability to use the because of the new policy. But they're not using the parks. They're, they're, they're not. They're, yeah, they're, they're putting they're them all over. They're putting them all over the place. They're not putting them in front of a park to advertise. The, an event that they're putting them all over to say sign-ups are for baseball 
I mean, I, I don't, am I? Yeah, no, I, I get that. Doesn't make sense. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. So I'd like to make a motion to approve banners on just the day of the event. Okay, Mr. Savoy's made a motion. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Thank you. Just a quick history on this project. This project has been out there for many, many years. I would say probably about 10 years. And the issue with that project is that sheet flow coming from uh, the side of, or actually upstream from the wastewater treatment plant, which is a county property. Uh, going uh, and, and sheet flowing onto the backyards of one of our residential communities. I myself met with the county about six months ago in their office and I shared with them the design that would mitigate for that problem. Take that, take that runoff all the way that's caused by that industrial park and route it into the floodplain, uh, 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 containing it. And, and make sure that no quality, water quality issues is involved. Uh, we changed the design three times so far, and we shared that with the county, but the county would not allow us to move onto their properties, which is inside the wastewater treatment plant. It's a straight tangent that goes all the way from the top of the hill down to the floodplain. So we went through a lot of design, we made the changes, we met on numerous occasions, we kept the property owners up up informed in regard to our plans. Uh, last week, actually, I would say three weeks ago, we shared uh, our inquiry and request with them, and they, they gave us a January date to start. Uh, if you go to the site right now, we were advised by one of their consultants that's working on one of their big tanks that this is the right time to do it because there is no construction activity. And you go, you can go out there, you can see about 700 linear feet in that area that it's the time for us to do it, but they refuse to allow us, I'm sorry to use that word, to go in there and take, put the pipe, which it used to be a channel first, uh, but they're not giving us permission to do so. Even though we went to the efforts of replacing an entire fence, hundreds of, of uh, feet of a six inch high uh, chain uh, link fence, but still we're not getting any response from them. Uh, we just told them last week that if we don't get any response and allow us to get in there during uh, uh, the dry season to install the improvements, we're going to make recommendation to council to pull the money out because the cause of the problem really is caused by runoff from county property, not from city property. So uh, this is where we are right now and we just want to bring it before your attention to let you know that we're not getting any response and uh, that it should be a county problem, to be honest with you. There was a pond in the past in that industrial park, but over the years that pond, for some reason, was taken away. And that pond used to detain that water and it to prevent it from coming into the backyards. The big problem that we're having right now, which is, I witnessed that myself, all these tall trees that we have in the backyards, they're about 100, 150 uh, uh, feet tall. The roots are become, becoming very exposed to the point that some of them are leaning. And we made the county aware that some of those trees are going to fall on the fence and fall on, onto your property, and it could be dangerous for the property owners. But uh, I, I think that that point didn't ring a bell, but uh, well, without picking too much on the county, uh, I would like to put before you that we, were, we budgeted $150,000 for that project. We paid three times for the design, and we're not getting anywhere, so I wanted you to be, be aware of the problem, and if, uh, if we're not getting any response, I think we should go ahead and take that money and use it somewhere else to develop another storm drainage issue. It's a shame that, you know, in the past the county has wanted to uh, partner with us to help expand their waste treatment facility. Um, and here, you know, they won't return the favor in partnering back with, with us. It's very unfortunate. Um, I, I agree if you're not getting any response, I think it's best to use that money where it could be needed. To add to that, Mr. Savoy, uh, 
Uh, they proposed it for us one time to study. I think I shared it with you, water reclamation study. And we jumped immediately and we said we will share half the cost. Uh, but I'm holding that right now because we're not really, yeah. to be honest with you, we're not scratch my back, scratch yours, but we're not getting any response. Patrick, is, are they refusing to allow us to enter on their property more so because we're not willing to resolve the problem their way? And will it they be more willing to do it our way, not their way? Because I just don't understand from um, from a political point of view, from a legal point of view, why would they take the stance? Well, I think that uh, uh, the design that we're proposing, we change it three times to accommodate what they want, not to accommodate us. Right. Our reference would be to go out there, have an open channel, save a lot of money, and they convey that water from the problematic area down to the stream. I think the way they explained it to us that their construction projects right now and the big tanks that they're building, uh, they're kind of reaching all the change orders that they could absorb and they fear that our project's going to be conflicting with theirs. We don't think that at all and <coughs> in our experience we think we could go in there, take care of it and get out without even impacting any of their infrastructure. Okay. Um, Gary, do you have an opinion? Unfortunately, this is probably just a, it's a deal that has to get cut between the county and the town is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, I would, we could hit, certainly call legal and see, especially when there's a dangerous condition, right. and the only resolution for the dangerous condition is to you know, proceed on to county property. Um, I'd be happy to get involved and maybe get in touch with um, the county attorneys and see what we can do. Yeah, the issue I have is the safety issue. If those roots are budding up, and there's potential for those trees falling. You don't know who they're going to fall on or what they're going to fall on, so that really concerns me. Uh, what about a couple council members going down with, with Patrick and uh, asking for a meeting? And that seems to work a lot too in that way. I think it's an excellent uh, uh, suggestion. We elevated it all the way to the chief engineer and to the public works director. I'll be more than happy to elevate it to Ms. Cotto if I need to. I think it would be very helpful if council members would join us to go ahead and visit and make them aware of that issue. I think that would be very helpful. Yeah, I think, um, Patrick, you mentioned that there's Doing our duties abandoning our residents. The only reason, Mr. Mayor, why we're looking at that direction is because the improvement is going to, going to be on their property, on the wastewater treatment plan, dealing with Union County property. But you're absolutely right, it, it is impacting our residents and it's been doing that for many years. So I'll, I'll be more than happy to arrange a meeting and keep council members uh, informed about the schedule and uh, when we're planning on meeting in the town, Ms. Porter. That's what you have in mind, Ms. Is that Thanks to discussion items, budget amendment two. Mr. Marowitz. This when we make our presentation, but uh, basically it was a consent agenda item. We wanted to get it here because of the volume um, and everything. There's no impact to the budget, uh, zero impact. We move money from one operation to another within the same cost center. So uh, we just wanted to get it at the end of summary for. And I speak more about this when I make my presentation later. So just ask for your support. Like I said, Patrick and I reviewed them all. Here up, here up, 
Make a motion. All in favor? Thank you. All opposed? Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jim. Citizen of the quarter. Daniels, we have a uh, uh, just that also, I'm not aware that um, a while back one of our council members, Council Member Cohen, had a great idea of having citizens of the quarter. Um, and we had a last citizen of the back bill with the water that, um, that, stat that status back in December. So we we have to do we need two quarters to bring us up to date. And at the last meeting, we mentioned that at this meeting on July 11th, we would have names thrown into the hat. And so that's what we're doing tonight. I'm putting forth two names um, for the uh, first quarter and the second quarter. And I guess like Mrs. Howell will probably have names or so we'll put in, and we'll be able to take the citizen reporter. Uh, first name I'd like to put in is uh, Mike Hay. And the reason for Mike Hay is that he's, um, I've seen him a lot here at the meetings, uh, and he's been very, he's on the planning board for, for many years. And he's also been um, active in the community as far as around the schools, as far as traffic calming around the schools. So I think that type of dedication, he should be um, looked at as citizen of the quarter for January, February, March. And my second name is Dan Brown, which Mr. Ed also knows. Dan Brown is a, um, a member of the ABC board, and he's also uh, on the planning committee for many years. But also with what Jan Brown does, he lives in um, Brandon Oaks, and he has a golf cart, and you can see him going around picking up garbage. So I, that's why I nominated him also for the citizen reporter for the second quarter of the year. Mrs. Howell, I'll pass it down to you. I do, thank you. I do this is something that I certainly agree with uh, my kid. I would have known that he was a man who doesn't get a lot of attention, does the kind of people are going out there and doing things in their heart. And uh, I really respect him for that. And uh, did you ever know? I did. <laughs> uh, Mike Head would have been would have been a, a, one of my choices. That seems to be you know, pretty unanimous choice. Um, another person that that, uh, that I had in mind was uh, Michelle Reese, who uh, uh, even though Michelle's getting ready to unfortunately move from our area, she started the uh, Adopt a Cop program. Um, oh first one which was over now a year ago and uh, not only did it start out as a to, to get a, a basically a Christmas present I think for the at the time for for our deputies here and and uh, our show appreciation for the deputies here in Indian Trail it turned out that we got one for every single share uh, excuse me deputy uh, in Union County which uh, how many was that Michelle uh, we tried to get all full-time employees, and I think our last number was like 289 and maybe some undercovers. <laughs> and they got some nice gifts. Um, also, uh, uh, I, I know I know that Mike Mike did help, and uh, uh, Mike was a, was also a big help. Uh, Michelle headed up that project, and um, I, I think we were like um, 80 or 90 people. Uh, I mean. Uh, deputy short of filling them all and um, I know Mike uh, d didn't want anybody to know this so I'm not going to tell exactly who it was that did it but somebody got like the last 80 or 90 gifts and made sure every deputy had a had a, a gift and I, I thought that was uh, way and above uh, what, what you what most people do uh, and, and another reason is because of what you do for the children in our neighborhood. With your, you're not you're not really a crossing guard. You're just out there, kind of police what goes on out there. Uh, but Michelle also, uh, after she did that, she, she can't stay still. So she uh, gets up and she goes to the, uh, uh, I wouldn't say nurse assisted livings now, and she uh, makes sure that there's activities that go on there and. and uh, she works with with uh, the older folks, and uh, I think you do you do it once a week, or do you? It's been more like two or three, sometimes four. It depends on how many volunteers they have. But uh, anyway, uh, I just think we're very uh, honored and blessed to have two people like both of you at the same, here in our town. And uh, Michelle, we're gonna miss you. Uh, 
when you finally when you finally leave, and I, I, I swear I hate to say it, I hope your house don't sell. I, 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 I hope that, uh, that, that, that you can't sell it and you have to stay here. But I, you, you know I don't mean that. I, 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 I want you to be happy. So I will miss you. Are you tired of nominations? So I didn't have any nominations. I figured that you all would come up with some great nominations and I could just go from there. So I think Mike's great. Um, you know, and I think Jan Brown's a great person. I, I've known Jan for a while. He served on some boards here with the town and very active in the town. So, you know, I think those are some good choices for him. I think every choice was really good. So, what I would like to do is um, take a take a uh, have two motions for the first quarter, <coughs> and I guess that's you would know, say just to know it's a no brainer. Uh, we have Mike Head and Mike Head only. Um, let's make a vote. Uh, I would like to nominate Mike Head, uh, make the motion to nominate Mike Head for the Citizen Reporter for the first quarter of 2017. Mr. Davis has made the motion to nominate Mr. Head for Citizen Reporter for the first quarter of 2017. All in favor? Unanimous.
for Mr. Mike Head. Please stand. For our second quarter for July and September, Ms. Michelle Reese. July 1st to September 30th, I think it's 30 days in September, um, Mr. Dan Brown, and uh, we'll notify him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess since we're late, we'll be early. Is that all set? <laughs> 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 it's just voting on something we want. Yeah. Um, ethics training Mike, required for yeah, elected officials. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I just have a little bit to add to this conversation. Oh, go ahead. Um, if everyone will look at IndianTrail.org under the community section, there's now a page where you can nominate a citizen of the quarter for us to start thinking about for the fourth quarter. Um, <laughs> please uh, go to our websites under the community at the top. Uh, click on the citizen of the quarter page. There's a nomination form where you can fill it out and submit it on our website. Uh, Is that something you can put in uh, press releases? Of Course. And I would ask if we could uh, add a presentation to honor our citizens of the quarter on the agenda for August so we could put together uh, some things in our news release with all three of them photos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now for item C, ethics training required for elected official, Mr. Say. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, the intent of this is to make sure that uh, uh, we all have good training and uh, to, to assist us in figuring out how to schedule that training. We do have two options, two references. Either we could do it online, or we could do it through a webinar in our office, so the reference people need to choose whoever does not have the training for the last 12 months. Now, there, there are two items in regard to the ethic training. There is one that we usually require uh, here, and there is another one that's required for the RP, uh, RP, Yes, sir. Uh, that one is a bit different. The info needs to be turned in to Raleigh, to an office in Raleigh. So uh, that goes back to Mr. Mayor and Shirley. I think you do have it, Mr. Mayor, already, yeah. but Shirley does not. So we will work with Council Member Shirley to make sure that she's got that one. That's just online. It's pretty easy. Yeah. First, you have to get in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you, we'll just, if you decide online, we'll be more than happy to send you all the info, and we, we, we'll make the registration ourselves, too. Thank you. Council online in person. Are you able to choose? One, one question, Patrick. Yes, sir. Um, there's an ethics uh, class you take on um, one of the clinical classes. Does that allow you to sit in as a carpool rep, or that's a, this is a separate ethics for carpool? It, it might be the same thing. Uh, I'm not, you might need to look at that. I'm not yeah. familiar with that. I think I think this this ethics training, the, the ABC one, yeah. isn't that what new councilmen, new council persons that come in have to right. take that ex? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know I took it when I first came in right. at UNC. So I don't have to take that again. It's just whoever is new has to do it within the <coughs> first 12 months. That's how I understand that. We're talking about the same, the same ethics no, the, training. Yes. There's two separate ones. There's two separate ones. The first one that, that this ethic training required for elected officials is for new officials who have to complete that, and you can pick a class at UNC um, and do a class for ethics. That's what I know I had to do, uh, and I did that in um, Chapel Hill. And then the second one that Mr. Sadik has on here is for the Charlotte Regional Transportation Board. Right. So as you know, every, every two years, um, new people can sit on that board. So with every two years, you have to do an ethics um, disclosure or certification, which I know I did mine online. So that's what it is. That, that's what I believe these two are. Okay. Thank you. I might have misunderstood the requirement. I thought that we need to make sure that Every 12 months, the class needs to be taken. I'll, I'll be more than happy to check in. Yeah, please. Uh, and I, 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 no, no, don't take my word. I, I mean, <laughs> this is just re all I know is I've been sitting here almost four years and I've taken one when I first came in. So, Patrick, you'll look into that. Uh, I'll be more than happy to not have that before council. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Item D, NCDOT right of way maintenance. 
<coughs> Briefly, we met with NCDOT on numerous items today. One of them was maintenance of the right of way. We do right now maintain some of the right of way in regard to mowing grass. We're talking about approximately uh, 100,000 square feet. Uh, we just made them aware that uh, we're going to start. If we get any inquiries in regard to that right of way, we're going to go ahead and submit the request to their office so that we can pick up, pick up the bill from that one. They were okay with that, so they provided us with a full number and we're moving forward with that direction. So that way to lessen the cost a little bit. The second item that we talked to them about was uh, that there are many uh, streets out there in the city that require uh, maintenance. Also, they were willing to, uh, they gave us many references, either we contract the work, like the state patching and track pouring, and we submit a bill to them, and they share percentage of that work, or we could give them the, the uh, tell them with what streets we're dealing with, and they could deal with that themselves. Uh, but they were very positive, uh, they agreed, and we're going to provide them a list of streets, and they will get back with us with uh, what would be the best way for us, time-wise, to go ahead and take care of those deficiencies. So it was a good meeting, and I wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to board and committee members openings and recommendations. Thank, thank you, sir. We did provide in the packet uh, a spreadsheet showing the number of uh, committee members that have taken positions right now. What we'd like, we'd like to film if it's possible. And uh, so, Mr. Mayor, yes, I'd like to go ahead and, um, if it's all right with everybody, Patrick, what seats? I'd, I'd like to do one, one. Go ahead, Jordan. You're right. This is what's open. I agree with Gary, just do one vote, get everybody in. And I also want to tell you that I've been here four years. It's the first time I can understand <laughs> the Ouija board. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and the names that are on the front page are all the names that are attached here. Yes, yeah, so what we, what we did is we, we, we started sort of a little bit internal process that application comes in. Town and liaison will take it before the committee chair. He review it. We get consensus from him. It comes back to us. I will review it myself, and then when we're happy with with all the applications, we submit them before you for review and approval. And if it's possible, you got a chance to look at all of them. Yep. We're asking you if you don't mind to make. Uh, yeah, I saw them all. I read through them all. Did, did you guys read through them? Because there's no there's no overlap, so. Does anybody oppose to anybody who wants to fill and volunteer their time to sit on one of these boards? I'm open to vote the names of the bids for a mass a motion. A well, that's because there's nobody that applied for it. No? Well, well, we can approve these, and then there'll be other slots, right? Yes, we, we do have two more that we could, I think, insert this time, we'll insert it next week. Are there, are there available seats for those two people? Two applications, if I'm mistaken, or, or we already included them in this list. One is reapplying. Well, what are we talking about? I didn't catch this. Yeah, so what we're saying is that I have this list of open positions right. with names of people who want to volunteer to sit on these boards. Right. Shirley um, has mentioned that there are two people who applied, I guess, post when this was produced. So what I'm asking is the two people who applied, what boards did they want to sit on, and are there open seats for those two people to be able to fill those at the next town council meeting? The staff and the chair were made aware of all of the applications that we have. There's only one woman, I can't remember her name, that was looked over. There are two additional applications for the ABC board, which is not being discussed tonight at the uh, chair's request. Okay. So there, to my knowledge, I have to verify that, but I don't think there's anyone else. Who to see. I'm going to give the name, but he's sitting here. It's John Eichenbrode. He was reapplying before the uh, Board of Adjustments and Samantha. Right, they're both on here. Well, the paper on here. Not on the Board of Adjustments. The Board of Adjustments is John Eichenbrode. Yes, he's received by. Well, we don't. I've got a different one. And yeah. Samantha Towns has. Has seat two of the uh, okay, planning board. Right. 
Yeah, they're on there. Are you satisfied, Charlie? Um, yeah. We can just take the names here. real quick and you sure make a motion. Councilman Powell. Yeah. 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 Or, yeah. or you can do it if you want. So I'd like to make a motion to fill the uh, Indian Trail Board and Committee mm -hmm. open positions. So for the Board of Adjustments, C3, I'd like to uh, nominate or, or make a motion to approve Donald Butler. And I'm sorry if I if I mix up these names. Um, for the Board of Adjustments, C5, I'd like to um, to nominate John Ennenbrode. For the Park, C2, Steve Dodson. For Park, C4, Chris Bova. For the Planning Board and Tree Advisory Board, C2, Samantha Towns. For the Public Safety Committee, C3, Art Spur. For the Public Safety Committee, C3, C7, John Crone. For the Stormwater Committee, Seat 1, Joshua Allen. For the Stormwater Committee, Seat 6, Larry Miller. And for the, lastly, the, for the Stormwater Committee, Seat 7, um, Janine McIntyre. And I apologize if I butchered anybody's name. Boys made the motion. All in favor? Any the committee people there tonight would like to Can you stand, stand up, up, all of you, please? And tell us your name, please. <laughs> Board of Adjustments, been here and enjoy it. Yeah, great, thank you. Donald Butler, Board of Adjustments. All right. Steve Dodson. Steve. And Steve, your Board of Adjustments, right? Nope, Clark. Park. Got and it. Josh Allen, Storm Water Advisory Command. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that brings us to closed session.